the realities for women, girls, but also men and boys in fragile and conflict areas remains highly threatening. We have refugee um, movements, we have horrendous armed conflict, we have a situation um, of climate and environmental destruction that forces people to leave or to look for alternative ways to live. We have a gender pay gap, we have insecurities, not only in our refugee communities, not only by we mm, cannot externalize the issues. In, we still have cases of domestic violence, we have inequality, we have discrimination, we have glass ceilings in decision makings. We have the large majority of diplomats, they're all male. They're all from a similar background. We have unequal power dynamics. We look at economic imbalances. We have a gap between the rich and poor that is increasing. We have a gap between people who have access to information that is increasingly breaching and polarizing our society. And we have a very violent public discourse about people who do not fit into a system, who feel left out and who are left out. We have a lot of inequality issues in our countries and we can learn from other countries. Gender, peace and security issues um, touch on all spheres of human life, health, um, physical security and safety, but also political participation, um, a clean environment, the right to clean um, water, clean environment, fresh air, um, and all, all like the whole spam of um, human rights, for example. So what we need is different perspectives looking at these issues. So you need experts that come from different fields and that bring that experience and expertise from the highest level. So we need excellent doctors, we need excellent psychiatrists, we need um, excellent social and political researchers, analysts, we need international human rights lawyers, uh, lawyers of international criminal law, we um, need anthropologists um, that to understand how an issue as complex as gender and diversity interrelates with peace and security provision and policy and implementation.